Hi, in this video we will use the strategy design pattern to calculate Fibonacci numbers using a variety of different algorithms and we will analyze the performance of each of these approaches. So uh, a couple things I want to call to your attention if you're not familiar with the strategy design pattern um, I'm going to provide a link in the description box to the Wikipedia entry um, here and really the thing that I want to call out here in the strategy design pattern first and foremost uh, really what it is. The strategy pattern defines a family of algorithms, encapsulates each algorithm and makes the algorithms interchangeable uh, within that family. So quickly here let's jump into the example that they have um, and it has to do with uh, sort of billing, right? And let's jump over to Java and what we can see here is the key is starting off with the strategy interface. So here interface billing strategy um, and there's a signature on the interface on the on the strategy method here. Um, it tells you what it's supposed to return, uh, the name of the method and what its uh, arguments are, right? Really this is what you're conforming around and what you can see is there's many different types of strategy. There's a normal strategy, uh, a normal billing strategy, right? Uh, a happy hour strategy, et cetera, et cetera. And you can use uh, these various different strategies uh, when, when it's appropriate. Um, so there, there's that in terms of the uh, definition, a very quick, concise definition of the strategy design pattern. Um, the Fibonacci numbers really are just a sequence of numbers um, that you um, will, will see uh, either in math courses, computer science courses. These numbers are interesting because they show up in nature, uh, in finance, and in various different types of models. Um, and uh, there's some interesting mathematical uh, numbers that are, have a relationship to the Fibonacci numbers. Um, so you can look at that on your own if, if you don't already know. Uh, if you're a computer science major, you already you're familiar with what these numbers are. Uh, the definition is fairly simple. For any given Fibonacci number, it is the sum of it, the prior two Fibonacci numbers. So it's recursively defined, right? Uh, here, this Fibonacci number is basically 21 plus 13, right? 8 is 5, five plus 3, and the only time that's not true is for the first two Fibonacci numbers. Those are defined by fiat. And uh, you can either define them to be 1 and 1 or 0 and 1, um, right? So f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1, um, and those are the seed values. And the other Fibonacci, any other Fibonacci number um, is f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. The other thing to call to your attention is that um, Fibonacci numbers are undefined for negative values of n, right? Um, so, yeah, okay. So let's uh, jump right into it here. Let's create a new project. Let's make it a Java project. And let's call it uh, Fibonacci Calculator. Right? So here, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a Java class. It's going to be an interface, and it's going to be called Fib calculator, right? And on this interface, I'm going to say that int fib int n. That's the interface method. Very simple here uh, in order to calculate the Fibonacci number. Um, it's going to return an integer. It's going to take an it's going to take an n and it's going to return the nth Fibonacci number associated with that, right? So if we were looking back here, we would say that the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The 6th Fibonacci value is 8, right? So in this method, if we gave it 6, we'd get back 8. Right. So um, now let's start with uh, the naive recursive solution. Uh, let's say that it's a class, and let's call it naive recursive fib and say that it implements fib calculator. And here we can use IntelliJ to help us here implement the method. Boom. And we're just going to say if n less than or equal to 2, 
or actually less than or equal to 1. Return n, otherwise return fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. Okay, and yeah, we're not going to do any special checks for negative values or anything like that and throw in a legal argument exception or any of that. Um, I just uh, quickly wanted to sort of demo this. All right, so that's the naive recursive solution. And let's create a new driver class. Let's go main public static void main string args. And let's say fib calculator, fib calculator is equal to new naive recursive fib and system.out.println um, fib of, uh, let's say, let's just do, let's just hard code it, fib calculator, just for, let's say fib calculator dot fib of six. Okay, right, that's exactly what we expect. Right, so next, let's, um, so, so, you know, you might deploy code into production and notice, oh, uh, there's some benefits to using the naive recursive approach, but it has its limitations as well. So if we were to run this with on fib of 20, we'd see, you know, it, it was, that was pretty zippy. 25, okay, now let's go 50. Now all of a sudden the program seems to get bogged down. Um, and the reason for that is that the runtime complexity of this algorithm that we've developed is O of two to the N. So it grows fairly rapidly. The runtime complexity, the, 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 CPU runtime complexity is, uh, it grows fairly quickly. Um, and uh, we can see here, I brought up another helpful picture. Um, here is the, using this approach, here is the call tree in our program. When we call fib of six, it goes fib of four plus fib of five. By the way, that's not the order it executes in the computer, uh, but just so, you know, for simplicity's sake, uh, pretend that this is the way it executed. Fib of five, six is fib of four plus fib of five, and then fib of four is fib of two plus fib of three. Fib of five is fib of three plus fib of four, and what you can immediately start to notice, even with small Fibonacci numbers, is uh, repeated subcalculations. Right, so we have fib of four here, and we have fib of four there. Fib of three is here, and here, and here. Fib of two is here, 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 and here, and we know that. Um, these values are no different. Fib of 2 is the same value here as it is here and here and here and here. But we go ahead and calculate it anyway. Uh, and this is inefficient. Uh, so I will, we will mitigate that in another one of our solutions. But I just wanted to call out that you may notice this in your code development. You might want to try out different strategies to solve an algorithm. Uh, you know, and so this is what you would do. You would use the strategy design pattern. So there's one, let's, let's design one more uh, here. Let's say new Java class, uh, let's say iterative fib, All right? And we're gonna say implements fib calculator and we're going to implement the method and actually I already have it in my copy buffer so I'll just paste it. So here we can see we say if n is less than or equal to 1, return n. Otherwise, um, say that the fib is 1 and the previous fib is, uh, actually we can make this 0, I think. Um, and we say for i is equal to 2, i less than or equal to n, i plus plus. Temp is equal to fib. Fib is equal to fib plus the previous fib. And the previous fib is equal to temp. Right, so this is a, a, an iterative algorithm that we can use without recursion. Um, so, so I would say that this is just fine. I mean, this would probably work. Uh, it's slightly more complicated to read. Obviously, this is a much more elegant 
um, much more readable uh, solution that it matches the mathematical definition, uh, especially if you understand recursion. So, um, so that's what uh, I would say this suffers from, but it probably performs really well, and we can test it out. We can come here and say fib calculator is equal to iterative fib. And if we run this, then oops, oh right, the Fibonacci value of 50 is so large that it overflowed the integer. So let's try, but it did come back very quickly, 40. Right, so that was very quick. And I would argue if we did this with the naive recursive fib, it would be uh, a lot slower. It was slower, but not too much slower. Actually, I think I got different results there, didn't I? Uh, iterative fib. Did I get different results there? I did. So that maybe there's a bug in my, let's try fib of six. Hmm, fib of six in my iterative approach is, so maybe this was all supposed to be a one. Yeah, actually I had it wrong. <laughs> I had it right in my coffee buffer and I changed it. Um, so if we go back to fib calculators main and we say 40, Right, now it matches. Um, so, you know, it's the, in this case, naive recursive fib is somewhat slower. Uh, yeah, um, but you know what we could do to really highlight this? We could change the signature on this method. Uh, refactor, change signature. <clears throat> Just to highlight this here. Didn't let me want to do that. Okay, that's fine. We'll just type it in. Long, long, and let's go iterative fib. Right. Right, so now let's try this again. With the naive recursive fib, this is going to take a long time. Take my word for it. Uh, but this should be relatively quick, and it is. So um, you could always stop here. You could say, you know what, I think I found the algorithm I want to use. I want to use the iterative version of my uh, approach. Um, you know, maybe in certain cases I would like to use the naive recursion, uh, the naive recursive fib. Again, this is sort of just sort of a, a tutorial. It doesn't represent, uh, in this example, it, it does, it's not clear why you would ever use the naive recursive fib version over the iterative, but that might not be the case uh, in, in, in different problems. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, here's a challenge that I would pose to you, which is, can we use the recursive approach and still be fast? Right? If you don't know the answer, you can pause the video and think about it uh, or do some research. Um, otherwise, here we go. What the answer to that would be is yes, we can. We can use memoization. Right? So I can introduce a new Java class. I can say uh, memoized fib. And I could say implements uh, fib calculator. And again, here, implement the method. And so the naive recursive solution, uh, or excuse me, the memoized solution would introduce a map construct, maybe, let's say, uh, to me for our, our memo, from, for the uh, data structure we're going to memoize into. I'll say long, long, cache is equal to new hash map. So here's one possible approach that we can take. And let's say that it's uh, static, final, and private. And so what we can say is that uh, if n is less than or equal to 1, then return n. Otherwise, uh, if cache.get n 
is not equal to null, that is to say it's in the cache, and we can just say return cache.get n else, and we actually don't need to explicitly write the else scenario out here, we can say um, final long result is equal to uh, fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 and cache dot put uh, n result, right? And then return the result, right? And so this is the memoized version of our answer, and we can come in here to our main, and we can say fit calculators, and notice how, how we can plug and play these different algorithms into our program with very little code change, right? So I can say naive, or excuse me, uh, memoized fib, and run that on 50, no problem, right? Let's go 80, no problem. If we did that with the naive recursive, the naive recursive solution, good luck. This program will take forever to run. Uh, you probably wouldn't finish even if you ran it overnight. Anyway, so I just wanted to make a video that demonstrated the strategy design pattern and Fibonacci numbers. Hopefully, you found this useful. Uh, please do uh, like, comment, and subscribe for the videos. And I will see you next time.